Hello, everyone. Welcome to the SIG testing intro and updates. I'm Benjamin Elder. I'm a senior software engineer at Google, and I'm a SIG testing chair and tech lead. Uh, I'm also on steering, and I participate in other parts of the project. Um, Michelle Shepardson, my colleague, uh, could not make it here today, but we'll have a recording um, with her portion of the talk. She's also a senior software engineer at Google. A little bit of a trend here. Uh, and recently a SIG testing chair. We'll come back to that. Uh, Chow Dai over here, um, senior software engineer at Google, works on SIG testing. And Antonio Ojea, senior software engineer. He was at Red Hat when we planned this talk. He's at Google now. <laughs> and also, I planned for him to be a tech lead from Red Hat, but uh, again, at Google now. So. Uh, So this is the biggest thing I've been working on for the past year um, as one of the most active leads in this space. Um, one of our other leads has been out for a while and just, you know, folks kind of move on. Trying to recruit some new leaders for this space, people who are doing the work and them elevated. Um, typically in SIGs, you'll see two to three chairs and leads or maybe just two to three people that are serving both roles. Um, however, a close read of the charter, there's no limits. so. Pack the courts, get some more people in, <laughs> we'll figure it out later. So Antonio here and Michelle, who you'll hear from virtually, are uh, new leads in this project. Antonio is a tech lead and Michelle's gonna chair. Uh, chairs help organize the SIG, run the meetings, things like that. And tech leads help us with things like spinning up and down sub projects and providing technical insight for the community as recognized leaders. Patrick Oley uh, at Intel is also a tech lead. Uh, he couldn't make it to this conference. And thank you all. So what is SIG testing? SIG testing is the SIG that works on how, th this is what's officially written, <laughs> if you want to look, but SIG testing works on the testing infrastructure, the frameworks, how do we test. SIG testing doesn't write your tests. SIG testing helps you write your tests. SIG testing helps you run your tests and analyze the results. So we have CI tooling, we have log analysis, we have test frameworks, and we have best guidance for things like how to deflake your tests. Um, and we work with uh, SIG release a lot on how to make sure that we're effectively have a test, well-tested release. Something else I personally work on, as well as Antonio, is the Kind project. Uh, that's originally Kubernetes and Docker, we're just backronyming it now and just calling it kind, you know, friendly local clusters because we also support Podman to a limited degree, um, which we've been working on. So it lets you run local clusters for testing. So testing built this so we could test things ourselves. We've been working on some major updates. We've done some pretty big rework with help from the community, a lot of help from the community to rework how we re handle reboots so that your certs will be re-rolled and things will not be broken if you happen to get a different IP address for your nodes when they come back up. So if you're running on Docker and you're using Kind from a current release, should just come back up. If it's not, follow a bug with us. We need to follow up on that. Um, we've done some image loading optimizations with the community, so we're smarter about we're loading this image again into your, into your cluster from a local build, and we know that we've already loaded it before and you just changed the tag or things like that, we can now optimize out. We have a much smarter implementation here. And C groups, <laughs> everything about C groups. Uh, the container community right now is going through a transition from the V1 API to the V2 API, and things are pretty different in how they work. Um, we've done some overhauls in the Kind project to make sure that we're like thoroughly compatible with this and we're moving towards the direction of most of the container space, which, you know, Whatever you feel about it, the container space is pretty much centralizing on we're using systemd to manage the C groups, we're using C groups v2, and this needs to work in kind even when the underlying host doesn't use systemd. Uh, so we have a couple of tricks. <laughs> I can talk to folks later if they're interested about to make this work so that kind just works everywhere but aligns with the expectations from the folks working on container runtimes and SIG node and things on how C groups should look, how they work, and how we run Kubernetes. And just generally keeping up with Kubernetes. Um, <laughs> kind is essentially a small distro, and there's things to keep up with. Kubernetes does its best not to break users with APIs, 
But there's a lot of details about how exactly you get a cluster up and running uh, if you're implementing one of those tools that you have to keep on top of. And now we should hear from Michelle. Hey folks, I'm Michelle. I'm a full-time software engineer here at Google and I work on TestGrid. Um, I also work as part of a larger team that works specifically on TestGrid and Prow and maintains the instances for external. Um, you also may have seen me around in the SIG testing group, specifically on the SIG testing Slack or elsewhere. Um, and I am also recently helping host the SIG testing meetings that happen bi-weekly as one of the new chairs. So more on that uh, if you are interested in the meetings in the link pinned in the SIG testing channel on Slack. Um, there's stuff on the agenda, notes, and where to actually join the meetings there, um, as well as time. But yeah, uh, I just wanted to call this up briefly. I'm going to go and uh, talk a little bit about TestGrid after this, but I just wanted to call out. Um, I am uh, historically have kind of a narrow focus within SIG testing on TestGrid specifically, but I also want to get more involved and give a little bit more back to the community that has done like an awesome job here so far. So I am very interested, and I'm sure other members of SIG testing are as well, in what you want to see and do uh, for SIG testing. So. Is there anything that you want to give us feedback? Do you want more ways to connect with other community members? Is there anything like really cool that other SIGs or other projects have been doing that you want to see replicated in SIG testing? Do you have uh, feedback on stuff that um, is keeping you from being more active or starting to contribute? Um, super interested in hearing all of that, and I think other members would be as well. But yeah, uh, without further ado, let me get into TestGrid a little bit, kind of what it is, where we're going, and more about just how it works in case you're interested in learning more about TestGrid itself or maybe starting and developing. So without further ado, um, TestGrid is your test results in a grid. So uh, TestGrid specifically maps um, typically the tests as rows to runs as columns. Um, and this lets you see a historical view of how your tests have been doing over time in a quick and easy uh, visual format. Um, so specifically, patterns in your test results over time. TestGrid is also highly customizable, so it's really easy to add things like extra information to the column headers here. For instance, if you want to see a GitHub commit for uh, each of these runs that have happened, stuff like extra things to the row names, custom statuses, viewing metrics that have been uh, reported from the tests on the cells themselves, um, or even things like alerting uh, an, with an email to uh, anybody who cares about um, when tests on this dashboard start failing consistently. Like maybe I want to know whenever the test uh, fails three times in a row, I can set up a way to get an email for that. Uh, yeah, so uh, those of you who are more familiar with TestGrid might be surprised to know that TestGrid has been around for quite a while. Um, although for a while it was internal only. Back in 2013, uh, Steve Dietz started a uh, test grid for a team at Google, um, basically in order to get that um, visualization of test results over time in patterns uh, for his team. Um, this expanded to other uh, teams who also found test grid useful. And eventually in 2016, this led to creating the external instance testgrid.case.io to serve the Kubernetes community and also other open source projects. Um, at the time, though, the code was an open source, just um, externally uh, available instance for folks to see and use. Um, and it was also called out, I believe, in an earlier SIG testing intro from uh, several years ago as basically the only part of the uh, Kate's infrastructure like this that wasn't open source. Um, so in 2019, we mostly fixed that. Uh, we had a little bit to get from uh, the initial open sourcing to a point where we were pretty solid. Um, in terms of all of the code that we have and finishing up a migration. But uh, after that, we basically have an open source backend. And at github.com slash Google Cloud Platform slash TestGrid, you can see all of the code that we use to run the TestGrid instances, both uh, internal for Google and external for uh, Kubernetes and other communities. Um, and this is uh, really the majority of the code that we use. Um, even for internal in Google, we use this code with a little bit of extra stuff um, in order to make sure that stuff works with Google. Um, the only caveats here for those who are super familiar, um, I might notice if I don't call it out, is that uh, there's um, a component uh, or two that hasn't been migrated over um, into open source, uh, which I think we will eventually get to. Um, and then the other part is I called out the back end here, but the front end, notably um, for the actual site and server, is not uh, open source either. Um, that is still internal only. 
at the moment, um, we're kind of planning out roadmap for like the next several years. So I don't have a lot to say that's concrete on that yet. Um, but I can say we're exploring options and we'll uh, have more to announce on that, I think, later in the year or earlier um, next year. So also, if you have anything that you want to say on this, please feel free to hit us up in the repo itself, um, file an issue or add to one of the existing issues if this is something that you care about. Um, but speaking of future plans, I do also know there's some stuff that we uh, are very excited to do um, starting in the new year. Uh, stuff like deeper integrations with Prow, um, getting you to uh, your test results faster um, and more directly, uh, getting you the relevant things that you need in order to troubleshoot and debug. Also stuff like UI and UX improvements, making some stuff that is maybe hidden features or not easy to surface easier for users to see and making the UI faster and more responsive. Um, and easier development, both for the core team of us that are working on TestGrid itself, as well as anybody who is looking to uh, join and contribute. But yeah, so getting into how uh, TestGrid itself works, um, I won't go into detail about all of this, but I mainly wanted to show this because um, I want to show an important uh, concept of TestGrid, which is that it is modular. Um, TestGrid is split up into a bunch of modules that each do a particular job, and then uh, those modules have discrete inputs and outputs. So for instance, the config merger takes configuration files in several different formats. That might be YAML, that might be proud job um, annotations, uh, that might be a, um, a proto itself, protocol buffer. Um, and then uh, outputs a configuration proto, which is the uh, global configuration for a particular test grid instance, e.g. Uh, test grid decades that I own. Um, the other update, or sorry, the other modules all work in a very similar way. They have some kind of input. They output something, usually a proto, um, and then those feed into the other uh, modules as well. So they can all act asynchronously, and they can also all swap out as long as the input that they have is correct. Um, this is important for uh, basically letting us be open and flexible. So again, important uh, TLDR here, TestGrid is a bunch of modules glued together by protos and sometimes other inputs. So uh, again, not to get into too much detail here, but um, to reemphasize, config merger, for instance, can take uh, configurations from a bunch of different formats. It's relatively easy to add something that is a new format as needed um, or to make it work with uh, anything as long as you've registered um, with config merger where the, uh, the thing lives. So you could have, um, for instance, a standard YAML defined in the test for repo or a different repo. You could also hand write your own proto, um, which is actually what I did for that uh, test grid screenshot you saw earlier is making my own uh, configuration for a demo. Um, or you could have something that say you have uh, a 10 X 10 matrix of jobs that you need to run in different configurations. Um, and you don't want to hand manage all of that. So maybe you have a script that auto generates configuration um, as a proto for your specific tests and throw that into config merger. Config merger uh, understands the format. It will output the uh, global configurations and make all of these together and then uh, just work with all the rest of the modules. Um, this also applies if you want to do something called test grid as a service. So this specifically, um, Again, to kind of just to uh, hammer home the point, as long as the data is the stuff that is needed for test grid to display your configuration and grids, um, you are good to go. Uh, so uh, in this instance, we have something that is running all of the test grid components uh, from the open source code uh, by itself and uh, just outputting the correct formats. Um, I want to emphasize you could also do something like handwrite all of these yourself, um, again, for maybe a demo, or maybe you have something where you're like wanting to run a custom uh, code for stuff like the updater or the config merger or whatnot. Um, those are all uh, free to experiment with. But as long as you have valid formats um, for all of the uh, data, all of the protos um, put into cloud storage, uh, the shared front end, tasker.kate.io itself, can read this. Um, and if you do that with running uh, all of your own components or something that will output the valid format, um, you can get something like the Knative instance. Um, basically, uh, Knative runs their own components um, and then outputs it to a particular place in cloud storage. Um, TestGrid is reading from that particular place in cloud storage and displaying only the Knative results. So all of these are scoped to just what Knative cares about from their own test results. 
without uh, needing to display all of the stuff from every uh, Kubernetes SIG or other uh, projects that are also on the main instance. Um, this is also a great way to do things like local development or uh, if you want um, experimental features. So yeah, that's a very brief overview of how it works. And um, we're always happy to answer questions about more. Um, but the last thing I just want to mention is if you're at all interested, um, there's a bunch of ways to contribute. Um, there are uh, several projects, uh, anything from stuff that we've marked with good first issue to larger projects that uh, would merit some discussion, but uh, we're open to um, considering like feedback on uh, how to make improvements or uh, improvements that you're interested in doing. Um, could be stuff like autofiling bugs instead of just emailing alerts out, um, or rather autofiling issues. On GitHub, anytime that there is a failure um, meeting certain criteria within uh, different Tusker dashboards, um, maybe routing them to the people who care about them uh, or particular teams who are responsible for the tests. Um, there is a, a lot of stuff that we could possibly do for result parsing. Um, so currently, a lot of the result parsing understands JUnit, uh, and uh, typically it's uploaded by proud jobs, but maybe you want to do something that is a different format um, that you also want to be able to uh, see in test grid, or maybe you want to do something with the existing result parsing, like uh, add some more uh, things that are specific to the proud jobs themselves and how they run, um, extra things about pods uh, or other stuff that is currently within the test format, but isn't displayed in test grid in the uh, quite the way you want it. Um, Similarly, there's a lot of different things that could be done with the summaries. Right now, they have pretty basic info on the tab and test self, but there's always a lot of stuff that could be added in terms of more powerful summaries that give things like, say, uh, additional historical trends, performance of certain metrics over time. Um, or maybe you want something that is like a really uh, easy way to drill down into a very broad um, summary across many, many dashboards, many SIGs, uh, that kind of thing. Um, and track down uh, what's the most important thing to tackle across all of the things that you care about as somebody who cares about a very large portion of the project. Um, but yeah, uh, aside from code, there's also things like, um, we're always happy when people uh, like let us know what uh, is either going wrong or pain points uh, with things like filing issues um, or just feedback in general. Maybe you like know about some test grid pain points. Maybe you have things that you think test grid does well um, and you wanna make sure we keep doing. Um, or maybe you have some stuff on like short-term fixes that we should get around to or longer-term ambitions and like really cool things that you think Test Grid should be doing or we should consider uh, taking a look at, integrating more deeply with other uh, tools or uh, groups and uh, anything like that. So yeah, uh, again, we're always open to feedback. You can catch us on the SIG testing channel or um, in the Test Grid channel itself on the Slack. Um, and aside from that, uh, yeah, thank you for your time, and I hope to see you all around. Cool. Thank you, Michelle. Uh, Michelle is not here, um, but hey, uh, if I'm there's... I'm a full -time. Oops. If there's any question that you guys are uh, have related to uh, test grid, we can try our best, but Michelle is no doubt the domain expert, so uh, we may leave the answer to offline. Uh, one thing I'd like to highlight about Task Grid is that our team had a hackathon week working on Task Grid and we did a really fun project in open source. Uh, we successfully implemented tic-tac-toe on Task Grid. And uh, the source code lives on my fork of the Task Grid repo, so if you're interested, uh, we can talk about that. Uh, Put that aside, uh, hi, my name is Chao. Um, I'm the uh, one of the TL working on Prow, and uh, Prow is one of the uh, important CI tool that uh, SIG testing is maintaining. And uh, uh, as part of the uh, evolution, we realized that one of the problem Prow has is that the build system itself is throttling the development of Prow and also uh, was a barrier for uh, Prow to be uh, easily contributed by someone who is not very fam familiar with this system. So uh, today I'm got, going to talk about something we've already done in the uh, 
since the uh, last SIG testing update, which was the PRO build system overhaul. So here I'm gonna talk a, a little bit about the background. So uh, here is what the PRO use. PRO has a backend as a microservice running in Kubernetes cluster. It also has a UI. So uh, the nature of that means that PRO source code contains Go source code, TypeScript, HTML, CSS, uh, all of those stuff. And we also have some Python bash script for uh, gluing things together. And when the project was initially established, uh, there was a build system needed for transforming all of these source code into container images and deploy onto Kubernetes cluster. And uh, guess what the build system is? It's Bazel. It's meant to be, for uh, someone who is not familiar with Bazel, it's meant to be multi-language orchestrating system uh, that has a very nice caching feature where you can compile everything using Bazel rule and uh, it will import all of those uh, background backend tools to help you compile and put everything into the destination. It's pretty good. It works really well, like very well calibrated and there was very few uh, flaky flaky issue and uh, it's always deterministic. It works really well unless uh, you want to touch it. So if there's any new feature, for example, Kubernetes uh, release, there has to be someone there to update the Bazel rule. But the problem is our community, the Kubernetes community doesn't have the expertise. So whenever you want to add something or update something, something like this. And uh, there were a couple of features in Pro, as far as you can tell, was at the, uh, abandoned because they were not able to figure out how to update the Bazel rule. So our new answer is we don't want Bazel, we just want to use all of the native toolchain. And uh, this was the project that we did uh, pretty much last year with uh, Ben and I collaborated on this. And uh, the native toolchain basically means for Go, we're just going to do Go build, Go test. And uh, for TypeScript, we'll use all of those uh, TypeScript native stuff, like NPM, all of those stuff. And uh, for image building, we uh, use Co. Um, that was an interesting tool. It's supposed to be used only by projects that, that are written in Go, because if you have a Go binary source code, uh, you don't need any Docker file or anything else. You just say Go publish. It will build the Go binary and package it into a distro list image. This is very nice. And also, by the way, uh, they, uh, earlier this year, they also uh, enhanced Go with the SBOM support, the software build material, yeah. Adolfo is here, he's nodding. <laughs> All right, so, yeah, so by, by this transition, we uh, got SBOM by free. It was pretty nice and uh, it's a long process. I'm not going to go into too much detail how we jumped the hoop of uh, bundling TypeScript compilation into code package, but uh, we had a pretty good success. So the build speed, uh, I mean, the pre summit test is a 60% reduction as a result. And the deployment speed is 800% faster. And uh, guess why? Because uh, in the Bazel era, even though the only thing I want to do is kubectl apply, it will download all of the dependencies from the world, like the Python dependency, uh, Go dependency, every dependencies. It would take like five minutes to download the word. I, it might also fail because network flakiness. So right now we, we are pretty much under one minute we are able to deploy everything. And people are happy. Next I'm going to hand over to you, Antonio. Okay, thank you. Well, I, I'm going to talk about something that is the most frustrating thing for the people that is 
starting to contribute to Kubernetes, okay? So it's just send a PR and you see this list of things, okay? You see a lot of jobs. This is a weird thing because all of this is green, but usually there is always one red, okay? And what these uh, jobs uh, are doing is, is testing Kubernetes. And the strategy that we are following for Kubernetes is, is the well-known pyramid. And, and we can categorize in different, uh, in different categories, of course. So the first of all is the verify. So we have a lot of jobs that verify what is happening with the code. If you modify an API, you check that the code generated is okay. We have linters, we have a lot of that stuff. That unit test, it goes through all the files in, in the folders and it executes all the goal and tests that it finds. Then we have a nice thing that is the integration test that it basically creates an API server, an ETCD, and run, run tests mocking the API server against this framework. On top of that, we have the famous ETE tests. These are the most we know for all the people because they are the more flaky, the more complex to debug. And this basically is, is uh, creating a, a cluster. Before kind, it was, a, it was only a real cluster. But, and it took, I don't know, maybe one hour to run all the tests or something like that. With Kine, I think that right now it's in 25, less than 30 minutes to run the whole, uh, I think that about 700 tests, okay? And then on top of that, there is another framework that is running that is not very well known for the, also for the, not only for the developers, just for, not only for the new people, just for developers too, that is the scale test. These are some special framework that is uh, stored in a different folder that SIG scalability is maintaining and that run testing 100, I think that 1,000 and also 5,000 node clusters, okay? And well, during this uh, year, we were improving a bit each of these uh, categories. So you can see in Verify, this, uh, this is right now one person working on enable uh, Golan CI linters. There is also other person that is trying to lure you to, to, <laughs> to review his PR with work worker spaces with 82 commits. I mean, it's really nice if he can last that because we have a lot of technical debt and, and this PR is going to solve those problems. And more or less, that's, that's the, the scope that, and, and the job that we have in, in this area for this release or this next, next six months. Regarding unit tests, uh, right now you can see if you are filing a cape or something that they are asking you to add the coverage. I mean, this, I took a snapshot that looks really nice, but you see the percentages there are about 30%, 40%. We have coverage. And, and this, this is an area for new contributors or people that want to contribute to, to, to help out. Because, I mean, it's easy, you get used to the call, you start to, to get more connections in the community, and I mean, <laughs> everybody will be happy to review PRs that increase coverage. Just trust me. And the flakes, I mean, we need to reduce flakes. Right now, I think that we are in a good state, but, but this, there is always work there. Integration. So integration was, uh, it's, it's, it's something that not many people use, and it was, uh, it grew holistic, so holistically, so it was really a mess. So to, it was a mess in the sense that, um, when you run the job and the job finished running, it leaked about 10,000 goal routines, okay? We are talking about 10,000 goal routines. Thanks to voided, voided from SIG scalability, now it's only leaking 10 goal routines. But this is an example of, of there is no only work on doing or adding new things. There is work on, you know, improving current things. And, and this used to be oversight. Again, this is a good opportunity for the people that want to contribute. And right now, 
this is one of the areas that is going through through most development. Okay, we have the we are a lucky project. We have the Gingo author that releases a new version. He stepped by the one of the SIG testing community meetings and he asked if we wanted to try. And one person, Dei Chen, is here in the photo in the in that side. He took he accepted the, the deal and he was able to land it. And thanks to him and Patrick and Onsi and all the people, we have Kingo B2 that is bringing a lot of new features and and right now there is a, a big work on using these new features and improving the E2 testing. There is also uh, a great effort on rewriting the test. So they can be easy to read. Uh, they can report uh, better error failures. And again, this is an area that needs a lot of help and everybody's work, welcome to help, to, to help here. And what's last thing is this uh, is about the scale testing that right now is only used by SIG scalability. I don't know if other SIG are using it, but in SIG testing we have the challenge to add a new test to because right now thanks to Dan Winship we have uh, nice improvements in Q proxy IP tables to <laughs> to perform better at the scale, and we want to know how much better. Are we doing? And that's it. Okay. Just see, we are not the more fancy chick. We do things that maybe are not the nicest for a developer, but we are <laughs> a funny group and just come join us, uh, join the meetings, the channels, or whatever. Okay. I think that's the last one. Anybody else? Want to say something? Thank you all for coming. Uh, we intend to have some Q and A time, but I think we might be just about out. But if you'd like to ask questions before we run out or afterwards, we'll be around. For questions, we we have time if anyone has one. Uh, hey, Sig uh, Thanks for all of the work that you've done. I have a question about code that is out of tree. So uh, there could be changes both in Kubernetes and in the in the out of tree code. And for out of tree code, what we usually do is clone Kubernetes to our own tests and run them in our own uh, pre-submit tests. So similar goes for changes in out of tree code, and we want to test uh, Kubernetes. So. When there are changes in both sides, do you have any plan for the developers on that? Can you be a little bit more specific by what you mean by like something out of tree against Kubernetes? Like what sort of thing are you talking about testing? Okay, so for example, if I change something in the kubelet that affects a, a storage component and I wanted to run the e 2 test of the storage components for a specific CSI driver, Okay. This is the common problem that you have when you have a, when you split out on repo, right? That's why I personally against to having a need to eat this framework out of repo because it eventually it's going to go out of sync, and there is no good solution. You just start to scale and create thousands of pre-submit jobs that test things in parallel, but you are not going to be able to 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 deal with the maintenance of that. So my suggestion is to have periodic jobs. So at least you know in, in which, uh, in which not exactly the commit, but you can have an idea the, in, in which uh, time your, your external dependency broke, right? So as an example, one of the things the Kubernetes community runs is 5,000 node scale tests, but we can't run that on every PR. Um, similarly, we can't test literally every aspect of Kubernetes and we have like kind of a push and pull there. Um, I think for like out of tree integrations, that's another good example of run it there. Test grid, um, you can configure to expose the commit of Kubernetes you were testing against as well as your tool. Um, so when we run the 5K node scale tests and something breaks, 
you can uh, you can actually drag between cells in test grid and it will give you the uh, github link to um, compare between the commits to give you some idea to where to start bisecting uh, to find that change um, we tell people uh, between us and sig release we, we'd like you to get some CI running um, get it looking stable if you want this to block Kubernetes releases, you can talk to SigRelease and say, hey, I have a periodic job that's stable, that's testing these things after they merge, um, and, it, and it, it's stable, it provides good signal, this should, this should get promoted to informing and then to blocking for the release in the test grid dashboards. And then um, you know, when those things break, you have signal to do it. If you see them breaking frequently, uh, not due to the tests or the infrastructure or how you set this up, but because of actual bugs in Kubernetes, that's the signal that we need to move this into Kubernetes pre-submit so you're not constantly chasing down bugs. So something like unit testing Kubernetes, we're going to do in pre-submit because we know if we don't test it there, we're going to keep finding bugs after the code merges. But for something like integrating against Kubelet with an out tree provider, probably it doesn't break very often, we hope. And uh, if it does, then we should push it into pre-submit testing in Kubernetes. All right, thanks. Hi, um, do you have any um, plans or uh, any efforts going on for um, using GitHub Actions for testing things in Kubernetes? Uh, for Kubernetes itself, no. Um, our CI that kind of grew at the project provides a couple of nice properties that are difficult to replicate. Uh, a big one is that we're able to ensure that because it's such a large volume of chains coming into Kubernetes on, on some days in particular, um, it can be, for these things that will break frequently, it can be hard, hard to uh, track down. So the CI mer integrates with a merge robot that's part of the CI. And because of that integration, the merge robot is aware of exactly what commits of the branch you're merging into and the branch that you're as that you're asking to merge were tested, and we will only merge code if it's been tested uh, at the latest of both of those things. So if something else merges, uh, you're going to need to get tested again. And then we have some optimizations to okay, we have five PRs that are currently looking good for merge. We're going to batch test them together see if they all pass. If they don't, we're going to fall back to one. And we have to run a lot of external test resources. Um, a system that we didn't talk about today, we have a whole system for like leasing resources to spin up real clusters out in the cloud. And that run, it, for us, our CI system is based on Kubernetes. So the system that leases resources just runs alongside the tests as an application inside the Kubernetes cluster where we're running the tests. Um, and these things make it kind of hard to migrate. Um, however, some sub-projects like Kind are actually using uh, GitHub Actions a bit. Yeah, sorry, I should have been more clear. My question was more like, as a sub-project maintainer, how can I have more better integration from SIG testing if I want to use GitHub Actions for some of my stuff? Um, that's probably a question for Chow, but I'll say very briefly that uh, we've had some discussions about this. We kind of need someone to step up and work on things. Like we'd really like to see, for example, if, if tests fail, uh, the experience in Kubernetes right now is you can comment slash retest as anyone and, and, and get it to run again. And because people depend heavily on EDB tests to you know, do integration tests between different aspects of the project, um, tests fail a lot and these things aren't available. Um, but we have some, like, there's some limited integration with the merge robot and things. Um, yeah, any more comments? Uh, I think Ben just explained the merge robot really well. Uh, one thing I'd like to say is that um, I would say from my perspective, Kubernetes is not tied to Pro. If, you, if we can make a GitHub Action work for all of our workflow, I would say let's go for GitHub Actions. Uh, but right now, there are things that cannot be done, like what Ben mentioned, the merge automation is, right now it's impossible to, uh, to serve a project such as Kubernetes, Kubernetes. There's just no way that can be. But for sub-projects. Right, I, for yes. Sub right, for sub-projects, uh, it's definitely supported. And uh, the only downside is that we cannot ensure that GitHub Actions test against the latest head. 
which we do have planned to support, but that's long, long on our roadmap. It's, it's really hard, to be honest. Uh, we'll need GitHub Action to expose a lot of APIs for us to be able to trigger GitHub Action on certain commits. We only have time for one last question. So. Sure, we're, we're running a over. Uh, in the SIG testing channel, I saw that there is this new E2E framework uh, that is led by Vladimir, and I am not sure what's the difference with the E2E test binary that comes out of Kubernetes. So, so that framework is, um, I don't want to say experiment. I think we, we started as an experiment, but I think it's actually reasonably mature at this point. It's just not the one that we use to test Kubernetes itself. Um, you know, no matter how good that framework is, there is an enormous lift to migrate Kubernetes to something else. We have like thousands of tests um, and it's hard enough to get people to maintain them as is. Um, but we, since also that framework kind of grew organically, we didn't want the, we didn't want to move this out of the project and say, oh, everyone should reuse this. You should test things exactly the way Kubernetes does E2E tests because, I mean, we're actually not a huge fan of it ourselves, but it works. So the out of tree E2E framework is a project in the SIG to try to figure out like what is something that is reusable um, and is definitely something you should look at for uh, out of tree projects. All right, thank you. Okay. We'll run out of time, but we can, we're going to stay here if somebody wants to, to yep. come and chat. Thanks, everyone. Thank Feel free you. to ask us more.